Hi there everybody, it's Rarity here from inkbutterfly.com Thank you for joining me today for another card making tutorial where we're going to make um, this card so uh, one layer card, just really really simple um, using some background stamps, well a background stamp and then um, one of my uh, other favourites uh, there The Biggest Wish, so this is Rays of Light okay, this is what we're going to use today um, to create that um, background panel and I'm just pulling in Biggest Wish, very versatile, fantastic set, perfect for this kind of thing where you want the background just to sort of stay as it is and you just want that sentiment to come through. Okay, so that's what we're using today. Um, so colours on this one are uh, a whole heap of yellow, so started off with um, some uh, Daffodil Delight Mango Melody uh, brought in as well, and then we had a bit of Pumpkin Pie uh, around the uh, the edge there for the dark orange and then the stamping and the card base is cherry cobbler cobbler so that's the palette we used but um like i always try and do i try and give you some different color options just so you can see the card made in a different way um you may not like this particular um color option so I thought we'd go with some shades of blue. So I know it's rays of light and stuff and kind of leads you towards that sort of yellows and oranges and sort of sunset -y kind of um, colours. But I figured that um, uh, we could do something different as well quite easily. Okay, so I'm uh, going to bring in the Stamper Artist. It's perf this is just perfect for this um these large stamps there are uh, large acrylic blocks that you can use or you can put your paper on top but we're going to be doing um stamping with multiple colors so i want the um the ease of being able to hold this without having to hold a large block but i also want to have that reposition ability as well so that i can layer the colors up just putting the stamp case underneath there just to to help with the inking process so that's just off on the left there um, in fact, can I get it? I can kind of get it both in, can't I? Okay, if you're happy just having that off to the one side there. The uh, card uh, layer. These stamps are sized for American uh, card bases, which are a bit shorter and wider than um, UK ones, just because of the um, paper size that they use. So I am having to cut down my uh, stamp layer here. Uh, now this one's even smaller but I think I can get away with this one which I believe is five and a half. Yeah five and a half by three and three quarters then I think. Yeah so that's the piece of cardstock that I'm starting off with. So um, I'm going to go with uh, like I say a blue um, palette this time. So the first colour I'm going to go with is um, Balmy Blue just to um, put on that you know that pale sort of base layer if you like. So just sort of light tapping over the whole of that stamp it is going to go off the edge a little bit um, which is also absolutely fine. There are um, like uh, it's not a solid stamp if you like it's um got sort of divots here and there and whatever so if it's not inked up quite as well as you um you want it to be then that's not necessarily a problem either then you just want to give it some nice firm pressure okay so um you can you can press and everything but you want a nice even uh pressure applied to the whole of that so you could use a soft cloth like this um but I, I stumbled across I was just um you know just putting some stuff away and I found one of these little furniture pad things which are designed to sort of slide over things and these this is good just helps you you press down on these so that's cool but you can just you know Press it down and whatever, it just makes it a little bit easier. So that's what we get. And it's not necessarily, like I say, um, a real bold solid image because it's got these um, impressions um, 
in it as well just to make it look a little bit more rustic so our next color i'm going to pick out is pacific point and i'm going to bring out a sponge dauber to apply that so i'm going to open the the ink pad and we're going to um, use the the dauber to pick up some ink and hopefully you can see there yeah so what we want to do is kind of um, do like a ring, if you like, around that image. And again, there is no need to make this super perfect. Probably don't want it, you know, some sort of lighter bits going out. So it will fade into the balmy blue bit that we've got there and then make it a bit darker on the middle. But I mean, the middle, we're going to go over again with um, another colour so so dark in the middle and then as the ink sort of starts to to fade out kind of bring it out to the middle uh, out to the edge is what I mean okay so there we go we want some nice firm pressure on that as well Okay, now I can see on the in real life that that has picked up some colour, but I, oops, I think we could do with a bit more. So I was being a little cautious because I didn't want there to be a really harsh ring on there, but actually that's come out far lighter than I thought it was going to. So that's absolutely fine. So just putting in some more ink. So again, this, the um, advantage of this using the Stamparatus. Oh, I should have said as well. Uh, so the advantage of the Stamparatus is that we can just go over this as many times as we need to to build the colour that we want. Um, so that's looking better. I might even go again. The, the cardstock in the Stamparatus that I'm stamping on to, I've just um, tacked it down because I can't use the magnet because it would be in the way of the, the stamping. That's it, that's what I want. Hope, hopefully that's coming through um, strong enough on the camera. Okay, now notice I'm not cleaning the stamp um, because uh, we're working from light to dark ink, so um, the risk of contamination is quite low. Starry Sky is the next colour I'm going to bring in. So there's just a little speck of um, stamping seal on the uh, the back of that card just to hold it in place while we do um, this. So Starry Sky then going heavy into that central portion and kind of overlapping the colour a little bit you know like we would with a stamping blend or something and we want that sort of um, those colours to mix and again I want to intensify that central portion let's go again So again, this may not be coming through quite as intensely on the uh, on the camera through the lens. That's looking blooming gorgeous. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a little bit around the edges here, so I can see where the cardstock was because it's left an imprint. So I'm just kind of Putting in some bits around the edge. Another good rub. I love this tool. You'd never be able to do something like this without 
um, at all like this. Yeah, that looks cool. Okay. Okay. I think um, I'm happy with where that is now. Okay. So obviously that's pretty mucky. So we're going to have to get that cleaned off, but that just comes out of the, um, the, uh, the tool like that. We can put it to one side. So it's um, out of the way she says find trying to find a space to put it let's put it over there okay and uh, what we are going to have to do is transfer this now to um, the deluxe plate so first things first so this not use the plate uh, the foam mat in here because we were using a, a um, cling stamp so that was straight onto the uh, the sort of stamp artist platform, if you like, without a foam mat. So I'm just popping that off, popping that to one side. Just going to wipe away this excess ink. So this is just a lovely wipe clean surface, nice and smooth. So I can wipe that away. Pop in the foam mat because we're now going to be using a photopolymer stamp set. Okay, we've got another plate. Your when you purchase a stamp art, you always you will get two of these. And then we're going to pop our cardstock back in, and again, could use the magnet now, um, but because we've already got that sticky on, might as well just use it. And we're going to position our sentiment over the top of here. Now, I'm a little concerned now that um, my, uh, my image isn't going to be, um, my ink isn't going to be dark enough. Well, we'll find out. Oh, look at that. Never mind, let's just pop that back in place. It was... There. Magnet store on the bottom, so I'm just going to pull one of those in to hold that in place for me. And I'm going to bring in Knight of Navy, and hopefully that's dark enough to show up. We can, of course, stamp it a couple of times. So, because you've got ink on the um, the plate there. It isn't going to transfer, which is another real benefit to using the Stamparatus, all the excess ink, it won't transfer. So I can do this really confidently, knowing that that's not going to, to be a problem. So I am going a couple of times on that. So that has come out really, really dark. So you probably could have done um, just black ink on there. Um, if necessary, I think. Okay, so let's get that um, stamp clean. Ooh, that was a lovely noise. Did you hear that? Squeaky clean with the uh, stamping chamois. Very well loved stamping chamois. So that's clean. Okay, and on the original, can you see that there's um, some shine on that? There we go, shiny. So uh, we're going to clear emboss that. So again, we can use the uh, Stamparatas here to help us out with that because uh, we can now ink this up with um, Versamark. And it'll go in exactly the same place and we can get it heat embossed all right so bringing in the the stamping embossing editions i think it's called the kit uh, you get uh, a dust buddy thing a great little brush for clearing up and stuff and some reversible tweezers to hold on to your work when you're heating it so um that's all super cool um just gonna grab my large tub of clear embossing powder so that's ready as well so i've just transferred mine into a a larger pot. It's exactly the same stuff. So there we are, clear Versamark ink. We know it's going to be in the right place because it's all there. Oh, whoops. 
just to be sure we'll do it twice but that looks good in the light it's fine okay so we can pull that up get this out of the way and tip on our embossing powder you only need enough to cover the image you don't need to pile on loads okay so that's now got like a dust over the top okay see so it's just tidy tray just helps us funnel all that stuff away And if we had to, we could use the brush just to sweep away any excess powder, but I think we're good. Um, and then what we can do is hold on to our work now with the uh, tweezers. So we can grab hold of that nice and tight. Okay. And we're going to bring in our heat tool. Okay, so you'll, um, I will switch it on to mute while I'm actually doing the heating because it is a really loud um, process. But um, like I say, um, it's going to be loud, I'm going to mute it. You'll see me heating both sides of the paper um, just to try and minimise a bit of the warping and get in a nice smooth finish um, on, the, um, on, the, uh, on the emboss, all right? So I'm just going to mute that now and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so we're back and this has been embossed. So it does warp and stuff. And whilst the paper's still warm, you can kind of encourage it to, to come back a bit. But I'd just like you to see um, the lovely shine that we've got on there and it's nice and smooth. Now, that smooth finish comes from heating it um, from the back when you're doing the, the real sort of um, embossing stage if you like so I warm the paper generally by going backwards and forwards but when I'm ready to really melt that powder I do it actually from underneath so hopefully you saw that um, transform on the uh, on the cardstock all right cool so all I'm going to do now is just um, bob that onto a card base so I've got knighted navy because that's the um, to coordinate with the colour so just like I did with this one I stamped in cherry cobbler so I've used a cherry cobbler card base um, okay, just got a little bit of a white edge on the ed uh, on there. So I think what we'll do is we'll just whiz around that just quickly with a marker. You could use um, Stampin' Right marker or a Stampin' Blend. You can even use your ink pad if um, and just sort of dip the ends. So the, the stamping just didn't quite hit that top edge but you'll now not even notice because that's sorted that out okay so that's just a little optional extra so if you do find that white core is um a bother um, you can do that and then we'll just stick it down right so stamp and seal because we've got the warping um, I'm going to put on a bit more than I would do normally. 
those of you who watch me regularly know I don't usually use this much seal but and so we just want it to want, to want it to lie flat so just using that extra little bit just to do that line up your edges at the bottom there so they look even and then hopefully the top will be cool a bit harder when it's all warpy to get it straight um, but it'll be fine and then you could stick it under a book or something just to make sure that final piece is all nice and um, flat so I didn't bother putting any extra embellies on or anything like that I wanted it to be a nice simple um, thank you card that you can um, you can use all right so I put lots of different colors on you could quite easily have just left it at one or just done just a little bit around the middle just to emphasize that central portion or whatever and you don't have to heat emboss the um, uh, the sentiment if you don't want to either you could have just left it um, as it was so there's sort of scale ups and scale downs that you can do with this project but I hope you like it um, I hope it's given you an idea of how to use some background stamps uh, in combination with the Stamparatus too. Thanks a lot for joining me um, today. Hope you're staying um, uh, well and safe out there. And I'll see you soon. Okay, bye.